Where's Fiji? Dude, I don't know how to start this episode. There's no Fiji. Are we rolling or are we still here in the dryer? Yeah, I'll go open the dryer door. <laughs> Guys, it's fall. Fiji's on fall break. He has a sabbatical that he takes every year. It's a lonely time. But let's go ahead and start by saying, hi everybody, I'm Joshua. And I'm Caleb. And we're brothers. And guys, this is my favorite time of year, a, a time for Thanksgiving, a time for gratefulness. But really, it's a time for candy corn. No, Josh, it's, it's like harvest time, fall time. Harvesting a big bowl of candy corn. Guys, if you remember from last year, being the avid viewers that you are, I introduced oh, no. everyone here to the full meal deal candy corn extravaganza. That's right, I hold in my hand a full Thanksgiving dinner. Green beans, roasted turkey, cranberry sauce, and stuffing, but the good people at Brock's realized that they were missing two quintessential moments oh, of no. Thanksgiving. That's right, in our candy corn flavors, we also have apple pie and coffee, because who doesn't want to end that meal with a little dessert I'm and a little caffeine try this. No, 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 no! <laughs> this you guys told me last year. In your mouth, my whole life. Oh, this is a so good. Handful. Oh, this leads, it's of candy corn. You love coffee now. He didn't used to love coffee. He does now. I've got an idea. What, Josh? We're gonna play a game, okay? It's a drink. It's a game where every time you say the word Ugh. devil, you have to eat a candy corn. Oh. That I one's thought cranberry. we're not supposed to focus on the devil at this time of year. We're not going to focus on the devil, but every time you say it, I'm going to teach you not to love it by giving you something that tastes like gravy. Okay, I didn't say it. Like this candy I corn. Didn't say it. I didn't say it. For instance, sugar is the devil. That it is. Josh, you're a secret candy corn rep and you get money every time we say the word candy corn. I don't not always get money. Brought to you by Brock's. <laughs> okay. Interesting question uh, that came up. It has to do with mind-altering drugs. Ooh. I heard that candy, sugar, is one molecule away from crack cocaine, so it's right up our alley, I hate guys. to tell you this, but I've been eating one molecule away from crack cocaine all night. <laughs> Yana Maria on YouTube asks a very interesting question. She writes, wait, so taking prescription medication is not sorcery? I need to know. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Yes. That was a really random question. <laughs> it's random, but I like random things, and so mm. we're randomly going to answer your question mm. by the information in the Bible. Well, you elderly people, don't get angry. Hear us out, and we're going to go to the scriptures to answer this question. Where do people get this idea that prescription medication is linked to sorcery? Well, it's from Galatians 5, 19 through 20. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual morality, impurity, sexuality, idolatry, sorcery. Now, let me huh, stop sorcery. right there. Okay. The translation says witchcraft, or and some sorcery. say sorcery. That's true. right. So, what is that in Greek? In Greek, that word that's used twice in the New Testament is pharmakia. Oh. That's where we get the word pharmacy from. Oh, so every time I go to the pharmacy, I'm going to the witch doctor. Well, Strong's Greek Concordance describes it as the use of medicine, drugs, or spells. And its usage is for words like magic, sorcery, and enchantment. Who created but, magic, sorcery, and enchantment? But, Close Devil. enough. <laughs> oh, I knew you were going to do that. Well, guys, the other use is in Revelation 18.23. Mm -hmm. It says, your merchants were the world's most important people. This is talking about the great horror, Babylon the Great. And by your magic spell, sorcery, all the nations were led astray. Oh, Josh, it's true. So pharmaceutical drugs are the great horror. Well, in many ancient cultures, we're talking... Egypt, Babylon, they had magi, they had wise men, and they were basically sorcerers, and they used uh, opiates, mind-altering drugs, to put them in a state of euphoria, to hallucinate, to try to um, speak to uh, other spirits and get new revelation. And this carried on to the Greeks and the Romans, where pharmakia came from. They would use opiates, and they would inhale them or make them into teas. And uh, it really goes back farther than that, guys. If we're talking ancient Sumer, they use all these mind-altering drugs as well. But extra-biblical sources, uh, such as the Book of Enoch, if you remember the story uh, in Genesis 6 of the sons of God, of the Nye Elohim, who came down and mated with the daughters of men, uh, those angels were said to have taught the people on earth violence. They taught them how to create weapons of war. They taught the women how to wear makeup and to seduce men. But they also taught uh, magic, uh, how to make potions and spells, how to take roots and, herb, and herbs and, uh, and trees and plants to create these potions. Who planned all that? God made it all. <laughs> but did he, brother? 
Did okay, the devil, you <laughs> green, God, green devil. beans in a deal. Guys, right. let, let me read you some verses, okay, that, that no talk problem. about this in case you think we're just making stuff up. Okay. Exodus twenty two eighteen oh. says, you shall not permit a sorceress to live. Uh -huh. Leviticus nineteen twenty six says, do not practice divination mm. or seek omens. Mm. Leviticus nineteen thirty one says, do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritists, for you will be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Guys, uh, magic, sorcerers, all these things are real. Um, and, and it goes into more detail in Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 12. So basically every show in the CW. Yes. <laughs> Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 12. When you come into the land which the Lord your God has given you, mm -hmm. you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. Mm -hmm. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these these things are an abomination to the Lord. So those are all real things. Evil is real, magic is real, all this stuff. And God says, stay away from it. If you remember, um, probably two years ago around Halloween time, we spoke about witchcraft and how witchcraft, um, you may not be a, a witch and making spells and, and stirring a cauldron and, and doing the hocus pocus to be functioning under the spirit of witchcraft. And that's from uh, 1 Samuel 15, 23. It says here, For rebellion is a sin of divination or mm -hmm. witchcraft, and stubbornness, or arrogance, mm -hmm. is an iniquity and idolatry. See, guys, when you function in rebellion toward God, um, or say you try to control others in your environment, uh, when you make an idol out of your own thoughts uh, because of your arrogance, uh, when you function in legalism, setting your own standard above the standard of God, you're really functioning under a spirit of witchcraft. That's real bad, guys. It's, it's terrible. Matthew 5, 21 through 22 says, You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, mm. you shall not murder, yeah. and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Verse 27 and 28 says, You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If you sin in your heart, hmm. that is what God is looking at. That's if right. it's been committed in your heart, in your mind, if you've, if you've placed that thought and then yeah. you've focused on it, if you've lived it out in your mind, it doesn't matter whether you did it in real life. Bro, you just did that in the eyes of God. So say you're really superstitious um, you're looking for omens and signs. Uh, you wear magic charms. You look at your horoscope. You may watch those Harry Potter movies, but they're not real. Um, you may play those video games where you're like a wizard and you're, you're casting spells, but you're not really doing it. Uh, this is all kind of taking part, making yourself complicit in that same sin, is it not? I don't know what complicit is, but all that stuff's from where? <laughs> the devil? <laughs> How come you never shave a devil on the elk? <laughs> that one was gravy, just in case you wanted oh. to know. Guys, so the, back to our question that uh, Yana Maria asked, is sorcery partaking in pharmaceutical drugs? Because we know, like we've said, there's a lot of people hmm. that rely on yeah. pharmaceutical drugs for varying things. Uh, this can be anything from a long-term illness. This yeah. can be things like high blood pressure. This mm. can be things like getting your wisdom teeth taken out and needing pain medication wow. for a period of time. So what are we really saying here, we're the saying, Bible says? We're saying any drug that alters your state of mind, um, that, that affects your soul. Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. Uh, it chemically changes your thought process. You need that uh, to take away pain, to alleviate stress and anxiety, uh, and you become uh, addicted or focused on that. Um, that's something that the enemy can use to open a gateway in the spirit world. You take, you've heard of gateway drugs, Josh. I have. They're called gateway drugs because you're literally opening a spiritual gateway when you take them. You're, you're kind of tur turning off your mind, but the enemy sees that as an opportunity to come in to possess you if you're not a believer, but to oppress you if you are. And he can uh, bring, you know, tormenting thoughts, you know, suicide, depression, all these things, if you uh, really subject yourself to those mind-altering drugs over and over again. Remember, before you jump on, a, on an attack mode on uh -huh. us, or say that we're being legalistic, that's not what we're saying. Mm. We're not placing judgment on you, on you if you've partaken in these, yeah. or if you feel like you need them, or even if your doctor said you need them, that's not what we're saying here. Yeah. What we're saying here is that, guys, anything in your life that you place before God, that's right. anything that you become dependent on, yes. anything that you crave and say, no, I, I have to have food it. Food or entertainment or it, sex or any of those candy things. Candy corn. Anything candy like corn. that yeah. opens a door for the enemy to attack you. Mm. 
When That's we right. talk about life and life more abundantly mm-hmm. through the Father, we're talking about a life where we're not oppressed by these things, That's where right. we're not attacked, where we don't find ourselves struggling with habitual sin. Mm-hmm. So what we're telling you here isn't about, don't ever do these things. If you do, you yeah. are a sorceress. We're telling you that the root of these things is so evil and yeah. so plotted by the enemy mm-hmm. that he's attempting to keep all of us in bondage through seemingly inert things. Well, Romans 12, 1 through 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Guys, this is how to protect your mind. This is how you stay in the Word of God. You have discernment. You're not going to fall prey to the enemy's attacks. Um, Josh, in our lifetime, we've seen some crazy demonic power, magic, and all sorts of manifestations of evil. But we've seen the true power of God. We've seen the miracles. We've seen the healings and all that. And we know that that Satan using all of his bags of tricks is nothing compared to the power of the blood of the Lamb through Yeshua. And so what we're telling you guys is this. It is impossible for you to be in the Word daily Mm -hmm. and for you not to feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit as a believer. Mm -hmm. So we're telling you guys, if you have things in your life that are potentials, things that you say, well, I don't know I'm on the fence, or I feel I really need these and I can't give these up, we ask you to get in the Word daily. We ask you to make a concerted effort to up your time with the Father. Mm. Because the fact of the matter is, the closer you get to the Father, the more sensitive you will naturally become because He is so holy. So if you don't want to take our word for it, or you think we're being a little too pushy, which we don't want to be, we want you to hear from the Holy Spirit yourself. Get in the Word. Test what's being said against the Bible, against the Holy Spirit, and open your mind to Him. And so then you may have faith to believe for your healing. Or, or to have your body rejuvenated. God doesn't want you to be a slave to any pill every day. You may think, oh, I need this high cholesterol medication because I have high cholesterol. Well, you can believe for healing for lots of things, but God also made your body to self-heal itself. He gave us uh, fruits and foods and nutrients and herbs and things on this earth to help heal and strengthen our body. It says so in Genesis 1.29, He gave us all these plants. Uh, Josh to help us. And yeah, people can abuse these plants and uh, like opiates and stuff. We're talking about, you know, healthy herbs and things. You know, uh, in the Middle East, uh, dating back thousands of years, the Jews understood this. You could make herbal teas to alleviate certain symptoms. Say you're gassy. Say, uh, yeah, yeah, your stomach exploded. (laughs) Um, Peppermint tea. Does that sound like an opiate? You have peppermint all the time. That helps alleviate gas. You have uh, echinacea and sambucus tea. That's antiviral. You know, everybody's worried about fighting the virus. You drink that tea, it creates a boost in your immune system, makes you stronger. So before you jump on us and say, look, guys, I have a condition that cannot be fixed with herbal tea, that sambuca (laughs) won't fix. We are not doctors. We are not trying to be doctors. What we are suggesting is that you attempt to live by faith from the standpoint that if you were in a position right now where the prognosis says you are in need of these things, begin to believe the Father for your healing. Yeah. We're not telling you to jump off your medication. We're not telling you to do any of these things. Yeah. We're telling you that when you seek the Father for what He's promised, He's promised your healing. Yeah. He's promised you freedom. He's promised you life more abundantly. When you seek Him for that, each day you will draw closer to Him and you'll find that the, the dependencies you have in this world, they will slowly fade one by one That's by right. one. And you'll look in the eyes of the Father, mm. you'll receive your healing, right. you'll receive your freedom, and it doesn't matter how many of these I shove in your mouth, you won't need them anymore. I don't know why I even try. And that's why it says in 1 Peter 4, 7-8. Yeah. But the end of all things is at hand. Oh, well, I knew that guy if the sign was right. <laughs> yeah. Therefore, be serious and watchful in our prayers. And above all right. things, have fervent love for one another. Mm-hmm. For love will cover a multitude of sin when in doubt, love. And so I love you even though you force me against my will to eat candy corn. Thank you. Because candy corn is the devil. Guys, because my brother doesn't like to abide by the rules of the game, I'm going to go ahead and cover his sins with a multitude of love. I actually thought he was going to force me again this time. That's great. Hey, guys, join us next time. Brotherly love will solve all things bad. Lord, forgive me for my mouth sorcery right now. <laughs> that is mouth sorcery, definitely. It's almost, almost cocaine. The devil is in your mouth. Oh my God, it's almost cocaine. Oh, it smells gross. Mm. <laughs> Gravy. <laughs> <laughs>